Welcome to episode 12 in our Off the Beaten Track series. Today we visit Cypress Mountain Drive near Paso Robles in California. This track is about 7 miles of dirt, passing through BLM and private properties, and the area has some interesting history. As the elevation profile shows, the track has some fairly steep gradients. As usual, the GPX file and interactive maps are available at the link in the description. This ridge of the Santa Lucia range in the California coastal mountains, about 15 miles to the west of Paso Robles, is home to two abandoned mercury mines. Clow Mine to our right here, and Buena Vista Mine to our left. Mercury mining and ore processing operations took place at the mines between 1868 and 1970. And during that period, over two million pounds of mercury was extracted. The US Department of Justice determined the site owner, Buena Vista Mines, Inc., to be responsible for the contamination found at the site and beyond. Ultimately, the site owner was unable or unwilling to clean up the site, and this led to the creation of the KBVM EPA Superfund site in around 2002. EPA cleaned up highly contaminated waste on site to protect human health and the environment, and now site investigations and long-term cleanup planning are ongoing. The majority of the mine buildings on both sides have been demolished and removed. What I found interesting was the scope of the impact area covered by the Superfund site. As you can see on this map from the EPA website, the entire length of Las Tablas Creek from the mine site to Lake Nascimento is part of the cleanup area, plus the whole of Lake Nascimento. The enormous impact of ignorance and greed. Public access to the KBVM site is restricted, and if you do visit this location, ignore the toxic material warnings at your peril. Link to the EPA site in the description below. Approaching the first of what I believe will be two bridges here on Cypress Mountain Drive. And just an overall condition report of this, uh, this road, of the track. It's basically gravel so far. It's pretty well maintained. And obviously the road is for the benefit of, I would say for the most part, the private residences that are dotted along the course of the road. Right now we're driving alongside Clow Creek and I think this does crisscross the road a couple of times down here. I'm not sure if uh, Clow Creek flows from the Clow area or toward it. We are basically, I think, ascending from this point. You know, we'll crest at a summit at some point. So it could be that this is flowing the other way I suppose it's less likely to be contaminated if that's the case. Um, that said though, there are mercury mines actually dotted all around these coastal hills. And so, yeah, I don't think you can really bank on that. 
And this bridge is more recent, I think this is within the last 10 years. We're actually on a paved section of road, and I think this is the only paved section throughout the length of the sort of, I think it's 6.7 miles in total, this road. So I think that is the last of the paved area. On the left here is the only camping I know of on this road. It's the uh, Firebow 7X Ranch campground and um, I'm afraid I don't know much about this because they don't seem to have a web presence. I've seen it referred to as a family campground so perhaps it's something to do with uh, some sort of organized group camping. But I will leave the phone number for that in the description below in case you want to check it out. And as I mentioned, this road does cross over BLM land at certain points. I honestly do not know the disposition of BLM toward dispersed camping anywhere in this area. So I would advise that you check it out with the appropriate BLM office, which I believe in this case is the Bakersfield office for some reason and uh, see if there is any camping allowed, I just don't know. Um, now you probably did notice the road closed through traffic sign right at the beginning of the track. Now as far as I can tell, that sign is always set in that position. It is, uh, you know, you can sort of cover the sign up and I've never seen it covered. So I suspect it is just by default left in that state. So I don't know if we're gonna hit a hard block on this on this track, honestly. So we'll find out uh, if there is anything like that when we get to it, or if the road turns out to be impassable for some other reason.
the condition of the road still pretty good. It's definitely a little rougher toward this end. It's uh, a little bit more dirt than gravel, I would say, although it's still pretty good. And it's clear that some maintenance has been done on this. There are fresh patches of gravel here and there. And clearly this track is used uh, quite frequently, judging by the time marks. And the one thing I would say as we sort of get into this area is that the left edge here, as we sort of climb on this ascent, um, well, the road's pretty narrow, and the left edge has fallen away to some extent in different places. So I'm sort of making sure to stay over to the right. And I suppose the other thing to say about that is this is definitely only one vehicle wide. So I, I've been uh, keeping an eye out for areas that might be good passing places or areas, you know, where I can back down and allow an oncoming vehicle to pass it, if that should prove necessary. I haven't met any vehicles yet. You know, it's pretty quiet up here. Now, one thing I've sort of read on the internet is this road, uh, perhaps at the weekends and holidays, is quite popular with cyclists. And it's kind of like the uh, Santa Rita Road, which we have also covered in the series. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I've seen a couple of YouTube videos where, you know, cyclists traveling pretty fast on the downhill sections. And um, it is, you know, s something to look out for. I'm not sure what you would do in that situation, but I haven't seen anyone on a bike today. And we're still climbing. I think we peak at around 2200 feet. We're not there yet, a little further to go. I'm not actually sure what that aircraft sounding noise is. Um, I think it's from outside, I don't think it's from the vehicle. It's kind of strange, it keeps, uh, seems to be lingering a bit. I think these are manzanita trees with the bright red colored trunks, or bright red bark. And I haven't mentioned it before, and it's probably pretty obvious, but I have the GPX track being rendered here on screen at the left of the screen, so you can see our progress. So you can see that we're probably about two thirds of the way along, so we're about four miles in, I would say. And we've probably got another mile or so here of climbing before we get to the high point. And this left edge here is what I was talking about. So there are markers, I think, indicating, you know, where you need to be cautious along these edges. But uh, yeah, it looks a little steep and a little precarious off of there. So just be careful. Starting to open up a little bit here as we get toward the coastal side of this uh, the hill that we're climbing. And I think there is a pretty good view 
once we crest the summit down into the valley and I think even to the ocean towards Cambria. I believe this is the summit ahead. There's a road on the left here with the gate. Marks the uh, high point of this track. So no obstacles, no hard barriers. So at this moment in time, it does appear to be open. And we'll just pull down here on the left and take in some of the views down toward the ocean, the Pacific Ocean there in the distance toward Cambria at the bottom of the hill. Quick sprint now as we hyperlapse the last mile or two down toward the end of the track where it meets Santa Rosa Creek Road. This is the only other vehicle we've seen today. We'll skip ahead and continue the hyperlapse.
thanks so much for sticking with us to the end of the video. And I would love to get your comments and feedback below. If you enjoyed the video, why not give us a like? It makes a huge difference to our channel. If you want to see more of our videos, why not subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified of new video releases. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.